So now we come to the plagues. Yeah, the plagues. Plagues are a very important part of um, the Seder. Right? And we describe them a number of different ways. We have different codes for describing them. But I think that we have to understand the plagues as we go over them. Not simply as events, but as stepping stones in our amuna, right? And in the understanding of the world. These five, ten plagues that we have were intended that Paro, the greatest superpower of the time, would more than be brought to his knees, but would be brought to a recognition of God. Right? When Moses first comes to him and says, I come in the name of God, and describes God in his as the tetragrammaton, its four-order name. It seems that Paro goes through his list of God. <laughs> he list he of had gods. many, you know, he had yeah. a directory. A little directory uh, of God. Uh, I can't find it. Uh, why, why, why? <laughs> directory of I, I don't have any... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't recognize this God. It's, he's not in my book of gods. <laughs> I have like thousands of gods here. He's not there. Can't be. Yeah. At the end of, I think it's the seventh plague, he says, I recognize God is righteous and I and my people are Roshan, are evil. Principle, that should have been the last plague. God has achieved his goal. Mm. Right? His goal is that Paro should recognize that on every level God runs the universe. And that God is not a greater version of man but something completely separate. That God did not emerge from the universe, but the universe emerges from God. Paro comes to that understanding. So why the rest of the plagues? I think they're for us. Mm. I think they're for us. Because at this point, right, God makes clear I'm making a fool. That this should be instilled in us and in our children, and our children's children, these plagues, and then later Matan Torah, should be such a big thing over a period of time, event after event after event, hammering it into us, right? That God made us a nation, took us as a family in slavery, reached into the heart of slavery, and pulled us out as a nation and brought us to Sinai and gave us our constitution, founded us there as a nation. And it says everybody in the world heard about this. Hmm. Describes it. The Plish team, the, the Amalekites, everybody heard. Everybody got there. And they were scared. So when we talk about the plagues, Right. We should understand that they are stepping stone. Right? Rice describes them as a uh, ten-session uh, lecture <laughs> on <laughs> godliness of the world. Right. Right. Rambam says it is this story of the Exodus of Egypt which puts to bed all of the issues of um, the ancient faiths that were polytheistic faiths and establishes that there is only one true faith, right? and that there is a relationship between God and man, and that prophecy exists, and that God is involved, not just in the creation of the universe, but at the day-to-day -day moment of everything. On this moment, right, I will turn the sea this way. On this moment, I will return the sea to this point. At this moment, I will have the, the locust descend. At this moment, I will withdraw the locust. Right? So that his concern, you know, is, is there. Every element of our belief is founded in this story. When we come to Sinai, God describes us not as the God who created the world, which is in many ways a big a deal. Actually, imagine if there's no universe, there would have been no Mitzrayim. <laughs> 
He doesn't say that. He says, I am the God who took you out of the land of Egypt. Right? You should know. Right? You know all that that happened last year? Mm -hmm. And just now? You know, at the sea? And all that stuff that's going on, right? That's me. I'm that God. Right? That we should understand that it's all tied into one package. Right? That there are no... There isn't the god of the locust and the gods of what <laughs> and the gods of frogs, mm -hmm. as the, the ancients believed. There's just one that controls everything. Everything emerges from this god. God is the source of all of these things. And God himself has no source. God always existed. Even to say o o always existed is a tiny bit confusing. Mm. Right, as if to say there's an always. Uh, yeah. You know, but, but he existed outside beyond the always. Time, yeah, outside yeah, time. Exactly. Right. So then we come to, um, and, and I, I don't want to dwell on the plagues because time, you know, is, is, is getting late. Uh, but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And as I said at my table, I, we're going to talk about the plagues mm. this year. Give, give it some time. We sing the song Dianu, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Dianu, by the way, is the source or the root of Dianu we see on every mezuzah. Really? Every mezuzah is God's name. Uh, I, I will change the name slightly because you don't say it in teaching but only when diving. We say Shakai, right? Uh, where the K sound in reality is really a D sound. Right? When we say Dai Dianu, it's the same thing. It's the, the God that we recognize uh, that he could have stopped at any point but he gave us more and more and more and more and it's important for us not simply to say God took me from slavery into freedom that's the big picture okay. and it's a good idea to start with this generality and come to us and then build it through specifics here we build it through specifics and each stage right how many wonderful things did God do for us, right? He executed judgment on the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and not only that, that would have been enough, right? But that he killed the firstborn in order that we should be allowed out, that he gave us their wealth, and not only did he give us wealth, he split the sea first, and then he drowned them in the sea, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. He provided for our needs in the desert for 40 mm -hmm. years, our clothes didn't wear out, our shoes didn't wear out, the food we ate, we digested perfectly. Mun was a food when we ate it. There was no waste product from it. Right? It was digested completely in the desert. You know, imagine having a shirt. Yeah, never You've been wearing out. it for 15 years <laughs> and, and it's like brand new. It's still starched, it's so white. Uh, um. <laughs> You know, it's an amazing thing. It's a miracle, right? But this was a miracle. You go weight watching with love, man, because he never gained any weight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, he fed us with manna. He gave us Shabbos. Mm -hmm. right? He brought us to Har Sinai. He gave us the Torah at Har Sinai. Right? We could have managed without all of these things. Just leaving Egypt would have been a miracle in itself, right? Right. right. But not only did he uh, give us Torah, but he eventually gave us the land of Israel. We should, you know, have it rebuilt, right? And not only did he give us the land of Israel, but we had a temple and we will have a temple again. Right? So it's important to realize it in each of these stages. We're coming close to the important part of the Seder itself. <laughs> the Shulchan Aruch, the meal will be served. Robin Gamliel used to say, whoever does not discuss these three things on Pesach has not fulfilled his obligation. And what are these three things? The matzah, the moror, the, sorry, the, the Pesach sacrifice, right? The matzah and the bitter herbs, right? If you haven't discussed those, right? and by the way, we've already discussed them, right? And we will discuss them now in more detail. So what does it tell us here, right? The Vizhnitsa Rebbe comments that the gematria of the words Pesach, Matzah, and Moror are the same sum, sum as the words uh, well, Krasatan, 
to tear Satan, to destroy Satan. Hmm. On Rosh Hashanah, the Satan is destroyed by blowing the shofar. On Pesach, we accomplish the same thing through the mitzvahs of Pesach, Matzah, and hmm. right. the, They mean the same thing. Right? The, 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 the amazing thought. Yeah, the Gemantra is really neat. Um, So, um, so, uh, so, and then w we're actually going to do these things now, right? So, uh, and we talked about this before, is that we're going to do the Motzi and the Matzah, we're going to do the uh, Moror, um, and uh, then uh, we begin uh, to say how well, let's just look at this here um, a little more closely um, so we look at the the uh, shank bone or the chicken neck depending on what you use right and we say this is representative right of the sacrifice that was done at the temple and remind ourselves that we should have it again right you hold up the matzah the leader holds up the matzah right? so, and discuss the reason right now what do we say, right? Because before our forefathers Doh had time to eleven, the King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be, revealed Himself and redeemed them. And it stated they baked dough that they had uh, taken out of Egypt as unleavened cakes, for it had not leavened, for they were driven out of Egypt and they could not tarry. Also, they had not made provisions for themselves. Right? So the matzah now represents our redemption. Before it was our slavery, now it's our redemption. The more, or why do we eat the bitter herbs? Because the Egyptians embittered our lives in Egypt, as it is stated, and they embittered our lives with hard labor, with clay and with bricks, all kinds of labor in the fields. All their work they did was backbreaking. Hmm. Uh, and then, uh, we lift our cup of wine, cover the matzahs, right? Um, and um, We shall tell your son on that day because of this Hashem did for me when I went out of Egypt. Not only for our forefathers did the Holy One blessed be redeem us, but he redeemed us too, along with them, as it is stated. And he brought us out of there so that he might bring us to give us the land that he promised to our forefathers. Baruch Hashem, we have the land again. We need to finish rebuilding. Hmm. Yeah, but we need temple back. Right? Therefore, Amen. Therefore, it is our duty to thank, to praise, to glorify, exalt, right? And how do we do it? We do it um, by singing praises to Hashem, right? But says Yisrael be Mitzrayim. We begin to sing Hallel, right? And then, for some reason, which seems confusing, the cup is lifted, right the, the monsters are right? covered, we stop Hallel, yeah, we right? Yeah. We lift the cup up, Right? The matzahs are covered, and we say uh, a, a blessing over wine. And then we go and wash our hands for the second time. And this time we do say Nitilat Yadayim. And by the way, from the moment we go to wash our hands to after Moti Matzah, we shouldn't speak at all. Right? So then we come back quietly. And the leader uh, first says Min uh, Haaretz, and then he says the Baruch of Chilas Matzah, the from the bread from the earth, and then he says Chilas Matzah, the command that is to eat matzah on this day, right? And at that point we can eat the matzah. Then we dip bitter, bitter herbs in Chorosis with the following blessing: The Mora should be eaten without reclining since it represents bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, so we say the blessing of Achilles Moro. By the way, when we said, I left this out earlier, when we said the blessing over um, Karpas, right, we should have in mind that we also have in mind the Moro because it's also from the ground, right? Then we eat the Karech, 
the Korach is the first sandwich that came before Ward Sandwich. It's the Hillel Sandwich. <laughs> the it Hillel. was invented by he Jews, liked, not by liked, British. No one liked to have sandwiches. Right? <laughs> so it's in remembrance of the temple, according to the custom of Hillel. This is what Hillel did at the time when the temple stood. It should stand again soon. He would combine Pesach, the, the sacrifice itself, with matzah and with moror. You eat them together in order to fulfill that which is stated, and they shall eat it with matzah and moror. We should have the Paschal sacrifice again soon. Right? Was Hillel was he a coin? What? Hillel was a coin? Or I don't think right? so. I don't think he so would he would have not right. technically been able to officiate at the, at the temple. I mean, probably no, no. Very few of the Gedolim right? were Kohanim. Uh, yeah. right. they, 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 they didn't officiate. But could he go? He probably went to the te temple. Probably everybody went to. Yeah, the everybody went. Everybody to the temple. went to the temple. Women yeah. went to the temple too. Men, mm -hmm. women, everybody went to the temple at one time or another. Um, on the eve of Pesach, it was mostly men because there were other things going on in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so now we have the meal is served. M many homes begin the meal with an egg because an egg is round and it represents, or it's circular. It's not. Mm -hmm. There's no edges to it. Um, which is a sense of infiniteness. Right? Also, an egg is like we are. Most foods, when you uh, cook them, become more tender. Vegetables, meat, become more tender. Egg starts very tender, it's liquid. And if you don't cook it very much, you have a soft boiled egg. If you cook it more, you have a medium <laughs> And if you cook it for a really long time, what do we call it? It's a hard boiled egg. Hard boiled egg. Hmm. If you put a Jew in luxury, <laughs> it may be, sadly, that he may think, I deserve this, I worked for it, I got it, right? But when times are tough, the one thing you can't take away from a Jew, no matter how you boil him, no matter how you mistreat him, you can't take away this brisk that we talked about at the Hishanda. We hold on to this covenant with God. This is something that, that sustains us through the worst parts. And so when we eat the hard-boiled egg, it should be a reminder that the more you cook us, the tougher we get. <laughs> Everybody else and get away you know, from may you. become fall apart when you cook Not us. But we get tougher mm -hmm. when you cook us, right? So the meal is had, right? And then at the end of the meal, it's a very exciting time for, for the kids, right? Because they get to find the afikom, right? Uh, and uh, then everybody eats the afikom, and we have the third cup of wine, uh, and uh, we, uh, we bench. Uh, very important to, to bench. I know everybody's a little bit tired in a hurry, but you have to do the benching because that's when we thank God for, you know, this wonderful feast that we've just had, right? Um, and I won't go through the details of benching, but, you know, we can all be aware of it, right? Um, and... Um, you do those cool songs at the end, the ones, it's almost the, like the... Well, we're not there yet. Oh, okay. Because we yeah. have, at the end of benching, we're not done. Yeah. Right? We still have an important cup of wine to have, right? This is the we fourth. We fill cup. the cup for Eliyahu Hanavi, uh, right? Right. Um, it, well, sorry, at the end of benching, we drink uh, a kosher bracha, right? Because we, we bench over a cup, right? So we drink that one, right? Which is the third cup, right? Then we pour the fourth cup and an extra cup for Eliyahu Hanavi, right? We say that there were four stages of slavery and then four stages of freedom. Right? And each one of the, the stages, uh, we talked about it before, is represented by a cup. There was an argument whether we should have a fifth cup, right? the fifth cup being the land of Israel. Huh. The first events of the nor having to, to work and then to become free and then to exit, etc., all these stages, happens very quickly. The fifth stage happens much later, mm. 40 years later. And so there was an argument among Chazal, should there be a fifth cup? And many people say that they settled this with the Kos right? And that is to say, Elijah himself 
will make the decision when the time comes, should there be a fifth cup. Mm. Right? It should be soon. He comes with it to herald Mashiach. So then we say something that is very harsh. Right? But maybe it needs to be said with a special kavana this year. You know, because there are very evil people who have made very clear their mm. goal is to destroy the Jewish people. And they have allies. Many, many allies. Mm. You know, hatred, Jew hatred. I don't like to dignify it by calling it anti-Semitism. Jew hatred has had a renewal. Right. Yeah, it seems Things that were forbidden to be even said are said in polite company today. Hmm. That, you know, you can have people sitting on the Human Rights Council who hmm. are the worst... Um, disregard human rights more than anybody else, disregard the rights of women, the, the rights of uh, people whose sexual points of view are not our own, uh, disregard uh, all the norms of civilization. They can be the representative <laughs> of what international law is. Yeah, today. they're doing human rights. And, they're, and those people are in league with the people who openly state that they want to destroy not just Israel, but all the Jewish people. For evil to succeed, all it requires is for good people to be silent. I would argue that when good people are silent, they are not good. And they should know. And so when we say, before we open the, the door, or after we've opened the door for Eliyahu, we say, pour out your wrath upon the nations that do not know you and upon the kingdoms that did not call out in your name. For they devoured Yaakov and made his dwelling desolate. Pour your fury upon them, and may your burning wrath overtake them. Pursue them with fury and destroy them from under the heavens of Hashem. So if there are those who say that we will sit passively by and allow innocent women and children peace-loving people to be destroyed by evil in this world, let them know that this is talking about them. Mm. And this is not a random statement. This is aimed directly at them, and God will hear this. So much so that when we begin Hallel again, now, after that statement, connected to Eliyahu, mm -hmm. right? We begin with Lono Hashem Lono. Not for us, O Hashem, not for us, but for your name give honor. For your kindness and for your truthfulness. Why should the nation say, where is your God now? But our God is in heaven. Whatever he wishes, he does. Their idols are silver and gold and the handiwork of man. They have a mouth, but they do not speak. They have eyes, they do not see. They have ears, they do not hear. They have a nose, they do not smell. Their hands are there but they do not feel. Their feet are there, but they do not walk. They do not murmur with their throat. Like them shall be those who make them. All who trust in them, Israel trust in Hashem. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron trust in Hashem, the Kohanim. He is their help and their shield. Those who fear Hashem trust in Hashem. He is their help and their shield. But those who want to destroy us, let them fear the army of Israel, the air force of Israel, but let them know that it is guided by this. Nobody needs to be destroyed. It's not a requirement. But if you try to destroy us, you will for sure destroy yourself. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee given in the Torah, mm. and it's a guarantee through history. It's a miracle of the people. That's right. Uh, Arnold Toynbee called us the mistake of history. <laughs> the mistake of history? Yeah. Right. Because it doesn't make sense. Why should we still be here? Oh. Right. You know, where are the Assyrians? Mm -hmm. You know, where are the where are the, the, the Persians? Right. There are the Iranians. Right. But you know, where, are they the same people? I don't know. Right. And so now, you know, we and by the way, we asked that question. Right. We asked that question in a very famous song, Had God Ya, right? So let's just look at Had God Ya and we'll, uh, in a second actually. First, mm -hmm. we'll uh, 
There's a sort of the end of the that, that's like this we come to the end of the yeah. right? <laughs> and we have the fourth cup of wine, mm -hmm. and again thanking Hashem uh, for it, right? Um, and uh, then we come to Nirza, which is the end. The Pesach service is now completed in accordance with its laws, according to all its regulations and statutes. Just as we have been privileged to arrange it, so may we be privileged to perform it. O pure one who dwells in the heaven, raise up the assembly of your innumerable people quickly and guide the offshoots of your stock redeemed to Zion with joyous song. And we say, Lashana Haba Bi Yerushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Right? Right. And we, we can repeat that a few times. Lashana Haba Bi Yerushalayim. Right. So what is it really nice to do Passover in Israel? What is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine that the wall sure. or something. <laughs> For sure. So but it doesn't mean that we have to wait twelve months. Mm. Right. Next year we should be in Jerusalem. It doesn't mean we can't be in Jerusalem tomorrow. Right. We just should be there then as right. well. So we should think of this as something that's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I just want to find there are many songs that come after that for those who are still awake <laughs> uh, but in this book I wonder if they have Hot God Yeah I'd like to just see this the one that's like it's uh, like a repetitive thing like you had one yeah. lamb so, and then, then all this right. stuff so there's a number of songs that are sung they all have many meanings mm -hmm. but in this one it says one kid, one kid, my father bought for two zuzim one kid zuz is a very small amount of money yeah, right? yeah. Then came the cat, yeah. he ate the little goat, goat. Right? Yeah. and the dog that bit the cat, and the stick that hit the dog, <laughs> and the fire that burnt the stick, and the water that extinguished the fire that burnt the stick, and the ox that drank the water, yeah, it goes and the water that on. slaughtered the stick, and the angel of death, the moth and mother, who slaughtered the ox. Then came the Holy One, blessed be he, and killed the angel of death, who slew the slaughter, who slaughtered, etc. Mm -hmm. So we understand, right? that this is not about a little goat and a cat and a dog, <laughs> although, by the way, there's nothing wrong when you sing the song mm. to make the according the sounds, yeah, according the sounds, to the animals. Yeah, yeah. It kind of is fun for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. But that it's about those nations. We are the kid. The Jewish people are the kid. And the nations who have tried to destroy us have all been destroyed and do not exist. And within that little kid, right, within us, is a halo of Shem, a peace of God, halo of King. And that sustains, never ends. Right? And so when we sing the song that we should be in Jerusalem next year, and throughout the Seder, there really is one message. And one answer to the question, why is this night different from all other nights? And the answer is that on this night we focus on what it is that God did for us in the past and that he is doing for us today and will do for us in the future. We focus on the change from slavery to freedom, from enslavement to other men or to ourselves, to being an Evid of Hashem, to being a servant of God Himself. But what greater freedom could there be than to serve that which is all powerful and only has our interest in mind? It's a choice devoutly to be wished. It's a choice that the Jewish people have made, and it has sustained us. So we need to imbue on everybody at the Seder table, but specifically the children, of our history and the privilege that it gives us. We sit at the table like kings, because we are, and queens, and princes. We should make sure that we understand that we are crowned by God and that this day is a day in which we recognize that we took off the clothes of slavery and put on the crap clothes of royalty that we are his representatives in this world 
that we are under his protection in this world and that we have a responsibility to act according to his will in this world and so set the world on the right path. Hopefully by the time the Seder is over this year, we will all find ourselves in Yeshua, with Mashiach, Bimheira, Amen. Amen.